As 120 American choppers lift off to deliver 800 additional Arvin ground troops within striking distance of their ultimate target, Chapone. arrive to find the NVA have stripped the village of almost everything of value. Chapone is not even close to being the massive enemy supply depot military commanders expected. Over the next three weeks, as the 17,000 Arvin troops now inside Laos begin to withdraw, the North Vietnamese lay siege to those furthest inside the country. With their troops surrounded and outnumbered, inexperienced South Vietnamese commanders begin to lose control, forcing US choppers to come to their rescue. risk their own lives to save them, going in again and again. Some, Some of them, them are being, being shot, shot down, down two, two three, times a day. three times a day. They'd be shot down, rescued, go back, get another helicopter, fly back out, get shot down again. Uh, absolutely insane. You go in the club at night and all of their uh, pilots and crew had their name tags on cup hooks hanging behind the bar. And you could come in and take a look. And uh, those who got killed that day, they turned upside down. So you could scan the uh, roster, as it were, and see who was alive still. By the time Operation Lam San 719 concludes, nearly 3,800 Arvin have been killed. 253 Americans are dead, and over 1,100 wounded. It was a disaster. It was supposed to prove that the, the South Vietnamese were competent and capable and could take over the American role. That was the graduation exercise. That was the graduation exercise. exercise. But I'm afraid all it's shown is even though the South Vietnamese soldiers fought valiantly, their leadership is nowhere near ready to take control of this war. But that is not the message President Nixon delivers to the nation. Did the Laotian operation contribute to the goals we sought? I just completed my assessment of that operation, and here are my conclusions. The South Vietnamese demonstrated that without American advisors, they could fight effectively against the very best troops North Vietnam could put in the field. The South they Vietnamese wanted to spin it as a success, but that it should be amply evident to anyone who looked at the situation and, and be able to understand this war is lost. In March of 1972, with U.S. troop strength the lowest it has been in seven years, the NVA suddenly stunned the world by launching a massive three-pronged attack into the South. Nearly 150,000 enemy troops, along with supporting armor and artillery units, launched conventional frontal assaults against thinly held Arvin defensive lines. As some South Vietnamese units begin to crumble, President Nixon once again goes on national television, this time to try to help a faltering ally by building a case for a new phase of the war. 
throughout the war in Vietnam, the United States has exercised a degree of restraint unprecedented in the annals of war. However, when the enemy abandons all restraint, throws its whole army into battle on the territory of its neighbor, refuses to negotiate, we simply face a new situation. In these circumstances, any president who failed to act decisively would have betrayed the trust of his country and betrayed the cause of world peace.